Hey, flip me over. Come on, flip the pickle. Boom, big reveal. I turned myself into a pickle. I'm pickle me so. Why did I turn myself into a pickle and doing a terrible impression of Rick, you ask? Well, I hear Rick and Morty might be needing a new voice actor, so th think of this as my audition. Ugh. Come on, Cartoon Network. If you had any balls, you'd hire some random YouTuber as the new lead of your show. Do it, cowards. Wubba -dub, dub dub Let's get swifty. Hey. Hey, what are you doing? Don't touch me. Hello? What's that sound? I'm trying to talk here. Nobody wants to see this damn cookbook anyway. Hey! Hey! What's up, my Glip Glops? Today, we're taking a look at Rick and Morty, the official cookbook by August Craig and James Asmus. This book takes us along Rick and Morty's adventure through space and time with a focus on the funky alien foods they come across along the way. I really dig the way they presented this cookbook. Basically, for Morty's home economics school project, he decided to put together a cookbook of his family's favorite recipes. Rick doesn't want Morty wasting his time on this silly school project since they gotta go on adventures, so what does he do? Rick fills up the rest of the book himself and even enlists the help of other iconic characters from the show and they all fill the book with all of their crazy interdimensional recipes. Just like the show, it's crazy and wacky and it feels like there's something fun to expect after every page turn. I really love the layout of the book. I think it's the perfect balance of text and imagery, lots of fun flavor text to read and very close in tone to the dark humor of the show. There are no f-bombs or anything but there are some mature leaning jokes in there that's very on brand. And I also really like how the recipe pages are littered with illustrations and even screenshots from the show. And the screenshots are usually lifted from the same episode that the recipe is inspired by, which is a neat addition. The food photos are awesome as well, and I really like the extra details in the staging of the food. Some photos have lab equipment in the background to make them look like a part of Rick's lab, and some photos have the characters interacting with the food. The abundant illustrations and attention to detail really makes this one of the most thematic and most fun cookbooks to look at. Not all recipes have photos, but in this case I don't even mind because there's so much other good content to supplement it. The recipes themselves are based off of food from the show or are inspired by references made in the show. It's not just generic recipes with names thrown on them. They really tried to draw from the lore and there are a lot of fun and creative attempts to make some real dishes out of those crazy things. Really impressed by how much this cookbook embraced the theme. Now that we've had a look-see, it's time to get swifty. Let's try to break this space-time continuum by making some interdimensional grub from the Rick and Morty cookbook. Now we can't do Rick and Morty food without paying tribute to the iconic Pickle Rick. After all, Pickle Rick won the show its first Emmy, launched a thousand memes and inspired a bunch of merch, including this one. So to make Pickle Rick's transformation brine, we need to mix together a half cup of white vinegar, a quarter cup of rice vinegar, three quarter cup of cold water, half a tablespoon of kosher salt, and a three quarter teaspoon of sugar. Mix it all up and set it aside for now. Then warm up a pan and toast half a tablespoon of black peppercorns, a half teaspoon of coriander seeds, a quarter teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes, half a teaspoon of fennel seeds, and a bay leaf. Stir it for a few minutes until it's nice and fragrant, but make sure not to burn them. Combine this with the brine you made earlier and let it all simmer. Next up, get a large mason jar and place inside three lightly crushed garlic cloves and two to three sprigs of fresh dill. I actually grew this dill myself and it's one of the many herbs I'm growing in my click and grow indoor garden. I live in a condo so I don't have a ton of space and I don't have an outdoor area but growing a garden is made possible with click and grow slick and easy to use indoor gardens. Click and grow sent me the smart garden 27 model which is the perfect fit for my space. I used to dread buying fresh herbs because you buy a bunch and you only need a bit so you gotta force yourself to use the rest or they just go bad in the fridge. Now I got access to my favorite herbs like dill, chives, mint, basil and Anytime I feel like. I got jalapenos, cherry tomatoes, and even edible flowers like pansies if I'm feeling fancy. These aren't your average hydroponic gardens by the way. Unlike hydroponics, click and grow is way lower maintenance. No need to worry about water quality, fertilizers, pH level, no yucky tangled roots in the tank. Just pop in these pre-garden pods with smart soil technology, fill the tanks with water, light it up, and wait for the green. All of my pods sprouted except for one Piri Piri pod, which is fine because Click and Grow has a sprouting guarantee and will replace a pod in the rare chance it doesn't grow. This has been a complete game changer for me. I got a link in my description for 10% off your Click and Grow purchase, so if you like fresh herbs or if you just want a cool project to deepen your connection with plants and nature but without all the hassle, I highly recommend that you check this out. Back to our pickles. Add six Persian mini cucumbers with the rough ends cut off. 
I kept the ends on some of mine because I wanted some of them to have that iconic pickle rick look. I also couldn't fit all six that the cookbook called for, so I just straight up ate one. Once everything is in, carefully pour in the hot brine until it covers the cucumbers. For some reason, mine fell really short. In hindsight, I think it would have been better if the brine recipe was doubled, so to make up for it, I'm just gonna add some extra white vinegar to top it up and hope for the best. Seal it up and pop it in the fridge after it's cooled down. You can eat this the next day, but they become better over time and can last in the fridge for a couple of months. And since I'm feeling extra, I added some candy eyes on it. It's Pickle Rick! Now it's time to build up the courage to try these courageous chili dogs. Yeah, and what's courageous about eating a hot dog? If you know, you know. So let's make this chili. Heat up a pot over medium heat and fry up about a pound of ground meat for about three to five minutes. Once it's browned, add in one diced yellow onion, a 1.4 ounce can of diced green chilies, two seeded serrano peppers, I couldn't find any, so I substituted with jalapenos, then three cloves of minced garlic and cook all of this up for another two to three minutes until the onions are soft. Next, we add a six ounce can of tomato paste, a teaspoon of chili powder, one teaspoon of ancho chili, a teaspoon of ground cumin, and a quarter teaspoon of white pepper. Saute for another five minutes. After that, pour in a cup of light beer, bring to a simmer for seven to 10 minutes to reduce the beer. When the beer is reduced, add to that a 15 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, a 29 ounce can of tomato sauce, a 15 ounce can of red kidney beans with two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Mix everything well and let this all stew on low heat for an hour. Make sure to stir occasionally so it doesn't burn. This is smelling really good. Let's put together the chili dogs. Get some toasted hot dog buns of your choice with some cooked hot dogs of your choice. Place your chili on top. Sprinkle on some shredded cheddar cheese, some diced red onion, and we're ready to gorge on some courageous chili dogs. Prepare to get messy. For our final stop, we head to the AI-generated world of Fruity Land to have some colorful and fantastic Fruity Land waffles. To make the Fruity Land batter, let's make some waffle mix. The cookbook waffle mix recipe calls for six cups of all-purpose flour, one and a half cups of powdered buttermilk, a quarter cup of sugar, three tablespoons of baking powder, one tablespoon of baking soda, and three tablespoons of kosher salt. This makes about eight cups of waffle mix, but since the Fruity Land waffle recipe only needs one and a half cups, I made a smaller amount. So yeah, take one and a half cups of that waffle mix and add to that a cup of water, one egg and one egg yolk, two tablespoons of melted butter, and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Whisk it all together, but don't overmix because we want this batter to be slightly lumpy still. Split the batter into four bowls and add five to 10 drops of different food color to each container and mix it well. Spoon in about a tablespoon of each color into your waffle iron and drizzle in whatever pattern you want and cook these according to your waffle iron instructions. Unfortunately, I think mine was too hot, so I got a lot of brown instead of the fun colors. Damn it. For the next batch, I lower the heat and yeah, still too hot. Double damn it. Nothing some whipped cream and fun sprinkles can't fix though, right? Yeah, it still looks a little messed up and it's nowhere near as pretty as the cookbooks, but it's the inside that counts, right? Let's taste. Starting with a pickle Rick, I must have done a terrible job because pickle Rick over here looks like he's in severe agony. Look at him crying. Mascara running down and everything. I'm sorry I did this to you, Rick. You don't deserve this. Yeah, I highly don't recommend eating it with the candy eyes. It doesn't help that I used Marmite to help stick it in place. The cookbook recipe doesn't include those things, and rightfully so. Not gonna lie, when I filmed this, the pickle didn't have much time to marinate yet, so it's like I'm eating a regular cucumber. But I did try it a few days later, and it was much better, so don't judge from my reaction right now. After a few days, the pickle has absorbed more of the brine while still retaining its crisp, the combination of spices were tasty, but would I take this over store-bought pickles? Honestly, I like the store-bought ones more, especially the ones with hot peppers in them. Mm. And the store-bought ones are just much less of a hassle, you know? But if you're really looking to make homemade ones, then this is a pretty solid recipe. I would just double the brine, though. But these chili dogs are the ones I've been eyeing up. They definitely pass the eye test, but do they pass the taste test? With flying colors. This is pretty dang delicious. The chili has the perfect consistency, not too thick that it overpowers everything, but not too thin that it soaks into the bread or runs off the side. I love the combination of peppers and spices and the tartness of the green chilies take it to a whole nother level. Oh, 
Honestly, one of the best chilies I've ever had. Even with all that, it's still not that spicy, so I would probably double the chilies in seasoning because I like my chili burning hot. But regardless, I can eat a whole bowl of this anytime and I'm already looking forward to eating these leftovers for the whole week. The Fruity Land waffles didn't come out the way I want, but it's the taste that counts. And taste-wise, it tastes just like regular waffles, which is A-OK -okay to me. I think the recipe encourages you to experiment with the topping, so I'm gonna drizzle my go-to waffle topping of maple syrup, and that with the whipped cream hits the spot. Nice and crispy, and the inside, well-cooked. I'm still sad that it didn't come out as colorful, so if you give this a try, just make sure to keep an eye on your waffle iron's heat, and I hope you don't brown it like I did. Final verdict for the Rick and Morty cookbook, Rick-diculously creative and magnificently fun.